Well, hello, this is Mr. Doro. Today we're going to be talking about electrons in the periodic table. And by the end of this little lesson, I'd like you to be able to write electron configurations only by looking at the periodic table. And you can do it. As you're going through this, don't write down all the electron configurations that are already typed on here. But if I write them down, then you should write them in your notes. Well, up until now, we've been using the diagonal rule to write electron configurations. And it's worked out pretty well for us. But after this, we're not even going to need the diagonal rule. In fact, we're going to be getting rid of that altogether. You're not going to need it because you're just going to follow the periodic table. Hold on and you'll find out how. Well, I started out with three different electron configurations for you. Hydrogen, lithium, and sodium. Notice their location on the periodic table. All in group one. Hydrogen is in period number one. Lithium is in period number two. And sodium is in period number three. I want you to take notice of the last terms of their electron configuration. The only term for hydrogen is 1s1. But look at the last term when you use the diagonal rule. For lithium, it is 2s1. And for sodium, it is 3s1. So they all end in s1s. The only thing different is the major energy level that those are on. This is on the third, this is on the second, and this is on the first. Now, if you had to guess what potassium's last electron configuration entry would be. It's on the fourth period and it's in that same group so the last term is going to be 4s1 for potassium and likewise with rubidium, cesium, and francium. Of course there are all the other parts that fill in up before that and before this 4s1 but right now we're just noticing the last term. Now on this page I did beryllium and magnesium and you can see that beryllium and magnesium are both in group 2 Beryllium's in period 2, and magnesium in period 3. And if you look at the last terms on this, 2s2 for beryllium, 3s2, they both end in s2. Just the major energy level is the only thing. Second energy level here, third energy level here. So if you had to guess what, so what calcium would end in, then you would probably guess that calcium would end in 4s2. Well, hopefully you have a blank periodic table that you can write on. I should have given you one, and if not, I apologize, and I forgot. And I want to label some things that we've learned so far. So far, we've learned that in group 1, right here in group 1, that all of these end in S1. In group 2, all of these end in S2. That means that we're going to call this groups 1 and 2 right here together. We call that the S block. And the reason why it's the S block is because the last term ends in, these one end in S1, these end in S2. Now the number that comes before it is the period number. And so that's what we've learned so far. We'll come back to this. Okay, now that we have that taken care of for the S block, we're going to move over here to group 13. Group 13, I have the electron configurations for boron and aluminum. They're both in group 13. Notice what they end in, boron 2p1. Aluminum 3P1, both ending in P1. The only thing different again is that number right before it, which corresponds to the number of, of the period that they are in. Also, the same thing over here. I have fluorine and chlorine, and fluorine is ending in 2P5, chlorine ending in 3P5, both in P5s. And so that should tell you something even about iodine down here. Iodine is going to end in a P5 also. And the only difference is going to be the major energy level that that sublevel is on. And so for iodine, since it's in group 5, or period 5, it is going to be end in 5P5. It's going to have everything that fills up before that. And we could pick thallium right here. Thallium is going to end in P1. And so we know that that would be, this is TL, and that would end in 6P1. But what if I picked out something like arsenic? Arsenic is in group 15. This is our P1 group. This is our P5. So that means that this has to be our P2, P3, P4, and then P6. Remember, there are six electrons that can go in each P sublevel, and that's why there are six of them in this block right over here. So if I picked out arsenic, arsenic is AS. And that would end in, we know a P6, but we go over here and we find out that's in the fourth period, so it would end up in 4P6. 
So now we can add something new to our blank periodic table. Starting in group 13, we can say that this is called the P block because any element that we have in that block ends in P something. And we could even write them in here. We could say these were going to end in P1 and then P2, P3, P4, P5, and P6. Now there is one that does not count in this P block and it is that helium right there because helium even though it's over here in the p block it's separated out that will not end in a p something we'll figure out what that ends in and moving on to the middle section here the transition metals i have molybdenum and tungsten that i've drawn out the electron configurations for and they end in well molybdenum ends in 4d4 and tungsten ends in 5d4, quite a bit of extra things that fill it up before the 5d4. But this is a little bit different because even though these do end, this is gonna, all these are going to end in d4. Seaborgium, right underneath here, sg, would end in a d4. But when we look at the period numbers, they don't really match up. Tungsten is in the 6th period, ends in 5d. And molybdenum is in the fifth period, ends in 4D. The Ds are one less than the period number. And so if I wanted seaborgium, it's in the seventh period, that would be a 6D4. The Ds start with 3D right here. So now when we add on to our periodic table, the inner transition metals here, groups 3 through 12, these are the D block. And something weird about these that remember this is 3D going across here and this is 4D, 5D, 6D and we just number them this one right here in this group 11 don't think this is going to end in, in D11 just because it's group 11 this is the group 3 right here is the 3D1 and so this is going to be 2 less than that so this is going to be D9 and D10 and remember the D's have, can hold up to 10 electrons, and that's why there are 10 boxes, as we tell 10 elements going across here. Because this one right here is going to be D5, and then we can skip to D7. These will be D10, and that's how they're going to end each time. And finally, we get to the lanthanides and the actinides, and so I picked out cerium and thorium right here. And you notice that cerium ends in 4F. This is where the Fs come in. And 4F2 because it is the second one over. And then thorium ends in 5F2. But notice the period numbers. This is period 6 and period 7 technically because remember they belong right up here in this area. And they are the major energy level is 2 less than the period number. So these right here are the 4Fs. That's an F. And these are the five Fs as you go across here. Remember, there are 14 elements in the Fs. And so as we go all the way across here, I can pick out any one of these. I'll pick out Californium right here. And so Californium is going to end in, here's the 5 F. It's going to end in 5 F. Have all the other stuff before it, but then it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 5 F10 is going to be the last term on that one. So finally, we have the F block down here, F block, and remember that this is 4F going across here, and then 5F as we go through the very bottom of the outer transition metals. Okay, now we should be able to write the electron configuration for any element on the periodic table without using the diagonal rule, but just using the natural setup of the periodic table. So I'm going to pick this element right, I almost tried to erase it, right here. And so we're going to follow it across with what we know. Don't even know what that element is, we don't need to know. Because we know that this is the S block that we have to get across. Actually, helium over here is part of the S block and goes across right here because that's one S2 if we were to end at helium. So we have to go across the S block through one S2. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is write that one S2. That gets me to this point right here. And then I gotta come down here following left to right, top to bottom, and get across to this point. That is all the way across that part of the S block, which is two S2. Skipping across, I then have to go all the way across this P block right here, and that is the 2P block. And if I go all the way across, 
it's 2p6. And then I go down to the next one all the way across this s block. That is 3s2 because it's in the third period. Then going across this p block, that's in the third period also, that is 3p all the way across gets me 6. If I had to stop somewhere, like if I had to stop right here, I wouldn't put 3p6, I would put 3p4 because that's the last term. But I got to get to that where I circled. Going across here gets me across the s s block in the fourth period, that's 4s2, and then I have to get all the way to this one, which is in, remember, that's the d block, but it is 3d, and to get me to that one, that is going to be 3d3, and that's the electron configuration following the periodic table, the natural flow. Something else you have to remember is if you get way down to this point right here, after the 6s, we have to go down and fill the 4f before we come back up here to the 5d. Same thing with this. After the 7s, we have to go down and fill the 5f before we come back to the 6d. So that gets a little bit tricky down there, something that you got to remember. But just follow the natural flow through the periodic table, and you don't need the diagonal rule. It follows the diagonal rule all by itself. Okay, so here are four of them that I would like you to do on your own. Don't cheat and look at the diagonal rule. You're not going to be able to do that in class. The first one is this guy right here. And number one, I want you to do that one, the electron configuration. The next one is this one, two. And then I would like you to do this one, three. And then one more. How about... Mm, let's just go with this one right here, number four. So four electron diagrams, electron configurations that I'd like you to do. And go back and check it out. See how I did that last one? Follow the steps of the order. Start right here each time. And you always have to start there and work your way across all the way until you get to where you have to end. All right, have a great day.